welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Delaney and I'm a new mom to a four month old little girl named Seneca. In this video, I thought we would talk about all things baby sleep. So from the day Seneca was born in the hospital, I started co-sleeping, even though that's totally not what I had planned. I thought it was dangerous and I didn't wanna do it, um, but I ended up loving it and I'll talk about why and how we did it and all those things. And then now that Seneca is four months old, we are starting to sleep train. So um, yeah, if I sound a little bit congested, it's because Seneca and I have been sick this past week, um, which is also why this video is late and also why we waited a few days to start sleep training. She's been four months for a few days now. Um, when she was sick, she did not want us to put her down. It was heartbreaking. I swear no matter how deep in her sleep was or how carefully I made the transfer to a bed or her crib, she would wake up and scream and cry and just be really sad. So I held her <laughs> for like seven days straight basically. But we're finally kind of getting back into the groove. I'm trying to put the house back together. She seems more like herself and so I thought that we could start sleep training. It's only day two and I just put her down for her nap as you saw and it went super well. I don't know if it's because I was filming her and she wanted to look good for you guys or if she was just really tired but that went really well, exceptionally well. The sleep training method that we are using is called Camping Out and I first learned about it in a book called Bottom Line for Baby which I read right before Seneca was born. I really like this book. Um, and basically the camping out method is sort of like a gentle approach to the cry it out method. I think the cry it out method, um, I've read that it's actually very beneficial. It teaches your baby to self-soothe and obviously allows for you to get good sleep because you're not waking up through the night to tend to them. And they end up um, getting into deeper and longer sleeps because of it. However, Seneca is just too young right now. They don't recommend starting the cry it out method until they're like at least six months just because she doesn't have fully developed sleep cycles yet. And we still do a night feed right now because she is so little. So yeah, this just works for me. Right now we're doing um, the cry it out method for naps during the day and then she's still sleeping with us at night just because we're both still a little bit sick, but in the next few days, I'll transition to putting her in her crib for night sleeps. And then I have a monitor by my bed. I use the, just this like Motorola one. I'll find the exact model, but I really like this one. I can like talk to it, which I don't do, maybe when she's older, but um, I like it. You can attach multiple cameras to this one screen. So if we have more than one kid and they have their own room, Whatever. I like this monitor and in the middle of the night, um, her cry will wake me up. I'll go into that room, I'll feed her and I'll put her down. That's actually what we were doing for a few days before we got sick. So I had kind of started sleep training and then we got sick and it interrupted and now we're picking up again. So basically the way camping out works is you get your baby taken care of, like all her needs are met. So she's, her nappy's clean, her clothes are dry and she's fed and burped. And then um, because her needs are met, she's quite calm. I'll implement the five S's as many as I can. So those are swoosh, which I do by turning on her sound machine, um, swaddle, which I do using the dream on, I think that's what it's called. I'll look it up for sure. Um, the dream on swaddle. And swaddling, I think, is so important for young babies. It keeps them from waking themselves up in act during active sleep, which is a really deep sleep for them, but they end up like flailing around and they can actually hit themselves and wake themselves up. So um, if your baby doesn't like swaddling, like when Seneca was young, she would freak out if I tried a traditional swaddle. Try a swaddle like the Dream On swaddle where their hands are up. Some babies just find this more comfortable, but it's just as effective as a traditional swaddle. And I found swaddling to be so effective in terms of calming her down, um, getting her asleep quickly and staying asleep. Uh, the third S is sucking. Of course, sucking is a really important reflex for babies. It's how they 
eat and they need it to survive so it's very soothing for them to be able to suck on something if your baby sucks on their thumb that's fine seneca's obviously in a swaddle so i give her her binky and then the remaining two s's are the side or stomach laying position which they don't recommend you do for your baby until they can roll over from front to back and back to front which seneca can't do yet she can only roll from front to back and she's in a swaddle anyway so i don't think she'd be able to roll over in her dream on swaddle but um i have a little trick for the side laying position which i will show you sometimes if seneca is like really fussy in her swaddle then i'll put her in this position and it will put her to sleep it's just her preference in that moment um and the final s is help me out here what is it oh swing so they like motion obviously a rocking motion i can't give her that in her crib but four out of five um, or even three out of five of those s's works for me the reason that the five s's work is because it recreates a womb-like experience for your baby so when your baby is in utero they hear a really loud whooshing noise which is why white noise machines work for babies they also block out any startling noise you might accidentally make to wake them up obviously they're tight in your womb so that that's why they like the swaddle in the womb they're sucking on amniotic fluid or sometimes their thumb i have really cute pictures of seni sucking on her thumb before she was born um you're walking and so the baby's rocking which is actually why Babies fall asleep in your womb when you're awake and then they kick a lot when you're trying to sleep and you're being still. It's because they're actually awake at that moment. And then of course, it's not an S, but I would still obviously recommend making the room as dark as possible. Everyone just sleeps better when it's dark, including babies. So once all those things are taken care of and Seneca is laying in her crib, she is awake, but she's tired. So I don't really put her to bed at a strict time. I just watch her sleep cues, so when she starts rubbing her eyes, when she gets a little cranky, I can kind of tell, and I, I do watch the clock, so I never really let it get more than 90 minutes, but neither does she. So she is awake, but she's pretty sleepy, and most of the time she's crying, like she's fussy. I put my head on her head, I rub her nose with my nose, I massage her head, or um, shush her, or try to lull her, but I don't pick her up. That's like the one rule. I just put her in her bed, and I just let her cry, but I try to console her. And then once she's calm and her eyes are closed, I'll go sit in the rocking chair and camp out. And typically if she starts crying again, I'll wait at least three minutes before I go, soothe her again, and then I'll camp out, wait five minutes, soothe her again, camp out, 15, and then it gets up to like 30 minutes, but Seneca, to be honest, has never done that yet. I'm not exactly sure what you're supposed to do if you get to 30 minutes. I think you're supposed to pick them up get them to sleep, put them to sleep, and then try again next time. Um, but like I said, she she has been able to put herself to sleep before 30 minutes, which thank goodness, because my little heart probably wouldn't be able to handle just sitting there listening to her cry for 30 minutes. And that's basically it. So hopefully the idea is that each time that I have to tend to her goes down to zero, like today, I can just put her down. She knows how to get herself to sleep. She'll go to sleep, stay to sleep, and then however long her nap is. She doesn't nap for very long. She's kind of a short napper. So 35 minutes to 45 minutes is her typical nap length. And if she goes to an hour, I'm like really impressed. She does do two long sleeps at night. She typically wakes up around, so I put her to bed at like eight. She'll wake up, she'll do kind of like mini long sleep. She'll wake up at 10, 10.30. I'll feed her, put her right back down. And that's the first time when she doesn't have any wake time in between sleeps. And she'll sleep from 10.30 till 2 or 2.30. I'll wake up in the middle of the night. I'll feed her again. No wake time. Put her right back down to bed. And then she's up again around 6 or 7. And she's pretty consistent in that. To touch on co-sleeping a little bit, there's not much to say other than it's not as scary or dangerous or bad as I thought it was going to be. I had Seneca in the hospital. They had a bassinet for me, of course, and I didn't want to put her in it. I was just like so in love with being a mom and having my newborn baby that I just slept with her. And the nurses came in and they checked her vitals without taking her from me. No one had a problem with her sleeping in my arms. And 
when I got home, that's just, I just loved it so much that, and it was just so natural. That's honestly what it was. It was just so easy to, for both of us to be together. I'm holding her, we both fall asleep. We wake up together and we were just in rhythm. And then a few weeks later, after she was born, I did try to put her in her bassinet and she hated it. She screamed, she cried, swaddled. I didn't have the dream on swaddle at the time and I didn't have the heart to just like let her cry it out. She was a few weeks old, so wasn't about to do that. But um, that's kind of how we slipped into it. If you don't know, Seneca was born in Cancun and we don't live there. So we didn't have a crib and a nursery or anything. So it actually was just super easy to co-sleep at the time. I was not worried about blankets or pillows or anything um, after about a week of doing it because I realized that there's just sort of a natural way to sleep to protect your baby and have a blanket on you and a little separate blanket on her. And that was about it really she slept on her back and no one ever rolled over on her i did sleep in between her and her dad just because he wasn't as in tune with her as i was and he can sleep through her crying sometimes so um that was a protective measure i took but we never used a co-sleeping bed or a co-sleeping cushion or anything and it worked out fine and now that she's older i'm even more comfortable because she can move herself and lift her head up and things like that um, but I definitely will co-sleep with my babies in the future. And I think that's also why I'm comfortable with having, um, blankets and toys and stuff in her crib. She's just too young to grab those things and move. And again, she's in a swaddle. I'll probably be more careful about them when she's a little bit older, but then when she's older, she's strong enough to like move. So I don't really know, um, I know it's like a big concern or it should be, but I don't understand it and it's never really seemed to be an issue for us. So I just haven't done it. Um, I'm not saying do it. I'm not telling you that it like is safe. It's definitely logically makes more sense that it would be safe that there's nothing in the crib. I just, if you're a mom who found that co-sleeping or like putting a blanket on your baby in the crib doesn't scare you and you aren't sure if you should feel guilty about it, I would say you shouldn't because I'm in the same situation and our baby's perfectly healthy and fine, so. Look at who woke up. Sydney, you wanna say hi? Okay, so this is what I'll typically do in her crib if it seems like she wants to sleep on her side. Okay, let's take, let's show them. Let's show them our trick. Okay, I'm gonna set you down. There we go. Pretty girl, do you want a pinky? Oh, that's a pretty girl. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to get your blanket. Okay, so step one is to take a blanket and to roll it up into a long noodle. Like this. Let's do it far into the back that they can actually see. Ooh. Okay, are you ready to show them? Are you ready to show them? So basically you're just gonna take this noodle and you're gonna lay it like her head on the noodle, wrap it under her leg like this, and then it's gonna support her so that she can't roll forward or backwards. Oh, good girl. Okay, so this is what it ends up looking like. Are you cozy there, girl? Yeah? Are you cozy? Yeah? I don't know if you can see her, but she's just chilling. <laughs> okay, can I hold you? Yeah, no, you're awake. I'm so excited to see you. Oh. I hope I covered everything in this video. If you have any additional questions about co-sleeping or the camping out method, I would be happy to answer them in the comment section below. If you are trying a different sleeping method, which sleeping method is it and how is it going for you? If you're actually doing the camping out method, I would love to know how it's going um, if you're further down the road with it than I am. What else? Anything else? Anything you want to add? No? Other than that, I, we hope you have a wonderful day and we will see you in the next video. Bye!